If your magic tricks were real, that is, you could actually do what we pretend to do, would you still perform card tricks? Or is the magic you perform simply a path of least resistance? After all, a huge portion of magic books are devoted to teaching card tricks. But is this really the best path for our magic? Some of the biggest names in magic have traded in their decks of cards for props and storylines that make more sense for their character and performance persona. And frankly, that's a big reason for their success. They recognize something that many of us have not, that magic is a conduit for creativity and experience and the props don't really matter. Imagine a world where the magic we perform isn't just an illusion. The things we pretend to do, we could actually do. Would you settle for just performing card tricks then? I don't want you to get the wrong idea. This video is not intended to bash card tricks. In fact, I perform card tricks myself and I love doing it. But what this video is, is an examination of how we can incorporate magic into our routines within the bounds of our performance style and audience expectations to maintain authenticity, create an emotional connection, and ultimately unlock the power of real magic. This real magic that I'm talking about is communicating an idea, sharing a moment with other people, getting your ideas across. But to do that, we're going to need to incorporate elements of ourselves into the magic trick. Now, there's uncertainty among a lot of magicians about how to inject these personal stories and experiences into their acts. They're worried that it won't be well received or that they don't really have anything important to say. And I think this bleeds over into their magic choices. The problem is it's hard work and most magicians find it difficult to create routines or introduce props that are consistent with their own unique performance style. And so what ends up happening, they default to what has worked for other magicians, things like card tricks. The magic literature is jam-packed with sleight of hand for the pasteboards, and it's easy to see why. They're accessible, portable, and ubiquitous in these magic circles. But are they really the best way to communicate yourself or your ideas to your audience? Are they inspirational to anyone other than magicians? Maybe the only thing you have right now in your library are books that talk about card tricks. You're probably going to want to expand from there and find some books that help you tell better stories or tricks that teach methods using other props. If that's the case, then I recommend you shop with Don's Magic and Books. Don stocks a wide array of all different kinds of magic books. And this includes not only the most recent books that have been published, but also older books that might be out of print or harder to find. That's one of the things I love so much about shopping on Don's website is you really never know what you're going to find. His website is constantly being updated, bringing in a few of some rare book or are restocking with some of today's favorites. No matter what you're looking for, head on over to his website, which I will drop down in the description below, or type in donsmagicandbooks.com. Once you start shopping with Don, I guarantee you're gonna become a lifelong customer because of his excellent customer service, fair pricing, and fast and free shipping if you meet minimum thresholds within the United States. There's a reason so many erudite magicians shop with Don's Magic and Books. Find out why by shopping with him this week. Now, realizing that inspiration may not always come naturally, I think can dishearten a lot of magicians. It's important to recognize that creativity ebbs and flows, and building up the practice of regular idea generation can help you maintain a steady stream of inspiration. We're going to touch on some practical aspects of how you can do this in just a second. Breaking away from traditional routines and coming up with your own material, or at least your own scripts and presentations, makes most of us feel vulnerable and helpless. After all, now we're stepping away from proven tricks and proven presentations and into uncharted creative territory. Acknowledging this fear and using it as a catalyst for creativity can be crucial. Earlier I mentioned breaking free from traditional methods, props, or presentations. Doing this allows magicians to stand out from a crowded field, that is to become unique, like I think we're all intended to be. And ultimately that means making a bigger impact on the world through your performances and your artistry. But unfortunately, the bad part is it takes work. So how do we do this? If right now 100% of your magic is focused around one area, and let's pretend like it's card tricks for sake of discussion, then purposefully go out of your way to learn a new trick using a completely different prop. But if you're having trouble figuring out what that prop or presentational theme should be, then try this. Sit down and figure out who you are as a performer. What things outside of magic interest you? If you were guiding a conversation at a party and it was up to you to set the topic, what would you want to talk about? What would you feel comfortable 
discussing and be passionate and knowledgeable enough that you could share something interesting with everyone. What kind of props are associated with those worlds and those conversations? For me, that might mean things like cameras. I love setting up my YouTube videos, working with microphones and cameras. I like taking pictures. I'm into watches. And I like to read nonfiction books about self-improvement, personal finance, and faith. All of these things make me a unique individual. And these are just a few of the things that I would list when I start to write down and document who is Jeff Kowalk? What is he interested in? What does he have to say to an audience? The one thing that was obviously lacking from that list is playing cards. I'm interested in them, but only because magic has told me that I should be interested in them. I'm not a professional gambler, and chances are pretty good that unless you are, they didn't really make your list either. But I digress. You're starting to get the picture. Each of us is unique with different talents, skills, stories, and experiences that have shaped us into who we are as individuals. And now it's time to unleash some of that unique artistry onto the world. It might seem scary at first to try to come up with a story or a routine that incorporates something that interests you, but studies have actually shown us that people prefer to go into deeper conversations with individuals than staying shallow talking about sports, weather, or diverne and performance formed with red decks. As Shakespeare said, all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. We're putting on magical plays for our audiences, even if it's just one trick. And we should pretend that it's real because the emotional connection that we can form with other people is real. And that's the real point of all of this. I don't care if you do card tricks. After all, you have to do you. And I've seen a lot of successful performers who've made a living performing card tricks. But I beg you, don't do it because that's what's in the magic literature. There are thousands and thousands of books on magic and they teach all different aspects of this art. You can read books of magic on tricks with money, thought reading, connection through storytelling, and so much more. Ultimately, that's what this channel is all about. Connecting you with these resources that have been put into print for you to help you become the best possible version of yourself. Letting you grow as a magician, an artist, and a human. Telling your story in the way that only you can. Can. Remember that the magic you create stems from your own uniqueness. Embrace the challenge to break free from traditional magic conventions and channel your creativity into performances that truly represent who you are. Leave your audience as spellbound, not just by the tricks that you perform, but by the authentic magic of a real connection through storytelling. If you followed along with what I've said here, I'm basically encouraging you to learn something new. Find a way to insert something that interests you into a unique piece of magic. And if you want help, figuring out how you go about that process of now that you've identified some props in that world, how do you come up with a trick that might use those? Then check out this video, which explains some of the ways that you can do research for your magic. Oh, and if you want to know more about scripting, I reviewed a book down here that will help you when you're writing out what you should say to your audiences. As always, my friends, I appreciate you watching. And until next time, keep reading.